What's happening, Brewery Life? Jasper here today. Um, so today I'd like to have a discussion about stainless steel, copper, and passivation of our number one used metal in the brewery, really, stainless steel. Um, I see it all the time, a bunch of um, new businessmen, a new brewers to our industry um, spend thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars in stainless steel and brewing equipment, but they don't know how to take care of it. They don't know how to condition it. Um, and this can lead to huge problems down the road. Um, it, your brand new stainless steel isn't really like a new car you can just jump in, start, and drive around. You really have to do a few things to the metal before you get brewing. Um, sure, you can make some good batches without doing these steps, but maybe in five, ten years, your stainless steel starts to corrode a little bit. And that $100,000 of investment that you put into equipment just went under. You know, this could really cost you your livelihood. So it's something you really want to hone down on your knowledge and know about how to take care of our equipment in the brewery. So stay tuned. Okay, so traditionally in our industry, copper was used a lot for the brew house vessels. Copper is a really traditional metal um, that was used in breweries. It has uh, really superior heat transfer. So the way this was kind of explained to me uh, probably a decade ago, so I'm going off memory, was kind of the wetting of the, of the surface of the copper. So you know when you uh, boil a pan on the stove, there's little bubbles that kind of are stuck on the bottom of the pan that release and that kind of gives the boiling aspect of the beer. Well in copper, um, those bubbles are a lot smaller and release a lot easier. The metal is easy, easily wettable. Um, on stainless steel, those bubbles that are coming off the bottom between the heating surface and where your product wart is, those bubbles are a little bigger and won't wet off of the surface of the stainless steel. So that air bubbles on that surface are an insulating layer. Um, doesn't let the heat transfer from the bottom of the metal um, through the metal into the liquid. It has to go through these bunch of tiny little bubbles. So that's a big difference between stainless steel and copper is that, that copper wets easier, releases those insulating air bubbles off the bottom of the kettle, let's say, to allow that heat to be transferred in the liquid a lot better. So it is a superior metal for heat transfer. But copper's um, not as strong as stainless steel. Uh, it's not as tough and can get beaten up a little bit more and it reacts to a lot of our brewing cleaning chemicals, our caustics, our acids. You should use specialized um, copper neutralized, um, has an additive in there for, for copper. So they need specialized chemicals to clean. And that's kind of some reasons why our industry has now moved into stainless steel being the number one go-to metal um, for breweries around the world. So stainless steel is really superior in um, its cleanability, its corrosion resistance, its weldability can be easily manufactured. It's really tough at extremely low temperatures. It doesn't get too brittle. So that's why stainless steel is uh, one of the best metals to use, if not the best metal to use in the brewery. Um, there's a bunch of different kinds of stainless steel out there. Um, there's a whole 400 series of stainless steel, which is magnetic stainless steel. Then there's uh, the more 300 series um, non-magnetic steel, which we're used to. Kind of an alloy of uh, iron, chromium, some nickel, and a bunch of other uh, metals combined to make the two common uh, grades of stainless steel we use in the brewery are uh, 304 and 316. You've probably heard those a lot or hopefully you have. Um, 304 is the most common one. It's used on our, a lot of our vessels, our tanks, our FVs, our, BBB, our BBTs, um, the tubing in the brewery. Um, it has great corrosion resistance and for a pretty, for a reasonably good price. Um, and then there's also 316, which gets used a lot in breweries. This is more of a higher grade of corrosion resistance. Um, so your heat exchanger plates, your pump parts, more specialty parts 
um, that are in highly corrosive environments get a 316 metal used um, with them. So 316 is, I would say, 20% more than 304. Another awesome metal to use if we could would be titanium. It's a super good metal, but from 304 to titanium is about 12 times as expensive. So that's kind of why we use 304 and 316 um, grades of stainless steel in uh, breweries today. So stainless steel is great and all, but it's not perfect. Uh, you got to know that chloride is really the danger to stainless steel, especially at high temperatures and especially in acidic environments. Same um, with some base environments like caustic though. Chloride in your cleaning water leads to a faster degradation of the stainless steel. So that can lead to like stress corrosion cracking, um, some tensile strength breaking of the stainless steel, weld decays. Um, where the chromium is at present next to the weld. Um, stainless steel is TIG welded under an argon blanket. This isn't something you want to do just in your uh, shop at home because the welds will get oxygen in there and start um, reacting and doing a weld decay. Um, there's also pitting where uh, little embedded um, iron chunks can get in your stainless steel and those will start to oxidize. Do you know what feeds off iron? Thiobacillus. So you can get a microbial de uh, decay and corrosion in your stainless steel if you have some iron pitting and then thiobacillus, this microbe gets in there and starts chewing around making sulfur compounds and uh, putting those into your beer. So really you got to maintain your stainless steel. We do this by cleaning, passivation, and pickling of our equipment. This will lead to the longevity of your stainless steel, a more consistent product in the beer, and a protection of your investment because this stuff costs big money. So when we get new tanks, they often have a lot of grease, iron dust from the tools inside them, pencil markings, um, adhesions on them. Um, this is all stuff we really want to get out of the tank, obviously, before we start using them to brew. They'll lead to corrosion downstream or off flavors in your beer. So really the first step after you uh, get your new tank, um, got a bunch of dust from shipping it on the containers over to you, is to clean it, is to degrease it, to do caustic, to do a caustic loop, degreasing loop, and um, really clean out all the soilage, the iron dust, from the inside of the tank. You also want to wash the outside of your, of your uh, tank to get all uh, the shipping dust off of it. So that's really step one of taking care of your stainless steel is to clean it um, with caustic and a degreasing loop on these new tanks. Step two is the passivation of stainless steel. Um, maybe you've heard a lot of people talk about passivation. It's the creation of a chromium oxide layer, layer on the surface of the stainless steel um, on the inside of the tank. So chromium is what makes stainless steel um, stainless. I like to say bring on the chromium. So get, letting that chromium be that first surface layer of the stainless steel um, is super important. You don't want iron dust to be your first layer of stainless steel because when that oxidizes it turns into red rust. You want the chromium to be that top layer of the stainless steel so it builds this chromium oxide passive layer. So there's two common methods that brewers use to passivate um, their stainless steel tanks. So let's get into those right now. Most of the passivation steps, at least these two, use hot oxidizing acids to make that passive layer on the stainless steel. So nitric phosphoric blend is uh, the first one people use. You blend phosphoric in the nitric acid because nitric acid by itself is uh, really, really dangerous to handle. The aroma put off at really hot temperatures is, is really nasty to breathe. Um, it's really bad for your wastewater and it's just overall dangerous to handle. So you blend it with phosphoric acid to make it uh, safer to handle and easier to use in uh, your brewery. So this uh, blend of nitric and phosphoric can be used 
up to a 50% mixture with hot water heated to between 140 and 160 degrees Fahrenheit and then ran through the spray ball of your tank in a loop for an hour. So this hot oxidizing acid will help build that chromium oxide layer, oxide layer, the passive layer of stainless steel. And remember, you want to do this after a cleaning loop, not the first thing you do to your tank. Um, it's important to realize uh, the nitric acid plays uh, an important role in wastewater treatment. If you are familiar with your water um, chemistry a little bit, you know in your water um, treatment list, you'll see nitrates and nitrite levels. We want low nitrate and nitrite levels in water. Why do we want this? High nitrate nitrite levels um, would signal there's a sewage leak. There's human feces in your water. There's fertilizer leaking into your water. Um, this leads to birth defects, blue baby syndrome. And nitric acid, which we use sometimes in the brewery for these passivation loots, that, that nitric part of that acid actually raises those nitrates and nitrite levels in your wastewater. So it's a pretty dangerous thing to use, but you have to be aware when using nitric acid that it does raise um, those unwanted levels in your brewery. So the second method of passifying stainless steel and the more environmentally friendly way is to use citric acid, um, specifically a 0.6 molar solution with a pH between 3 and 3.5 heated to 160 degrees Fahrenheit and ran in a loop for an hour. You can make this solution by using uh, anhydrous uh, citric acid. Anhydrous means the water is out of it. It looks like a powder, like a flour. So you use uh, one, pow one pound of anhydrous citric acid into one gallon of deionized water. Um, and then you can balance your pH of this. You want your pH between 3 and 3.5, so you use ammonium hydroxide to dial in the pH between those levels. Heat that solution to 160 degrees, and that's your solution you can run um, through your tanks and oxidize your stainless steel with. Um, this solution's safe enough to use for spot treatment. If you wanted to put it on a sponge and hit some problem spots, maybe on some used tanks, um, this is a little safer of a solution to use. They also make uh, a really hardcore paste, which is made out of nitric and hydrofluoric acid for spot treatment. So on some really bad embedded iron in the tank, maybe on some used tanks or some ban bad manufacturing processes. Um, don't use this, right? Hydrofluoric acid dissolves your skin. It can ruin stainless steel if it's left on there for too long. Um, so that's something for the chemical pros to do would be to use um, this really uh, hazardous paste, but it's something that you guys um, should be aware about. So you've been listening to Brewery Life and you know how uh, the pros passivate their equipment uh, and you're like, I'm ready to go. Well, hold on a second. We still got to pickle the equipment to condition it. Um, what's that mean? So pickling is removing the beer soluble volatiles from the equipment elastomers. Um, elastomers in the equipment, you can just kind of think of as rubber. So they'd be your gaskets. You hear me talk about EPDM gaskets, Teflon gaskets, silicone gaskets. Um, this is where all the elastomers are. Your seats of your valves, your soft line brewer's hoses all have a flavor soluble or beer soluble flavor and aroma compounds that we don't want in there. So we need to pickle and condition um, our whole our all of our equipment to remove that stuff. Um, we do this by brewing a batch of beer literally that we know we're going to put down the drain. So you brew a batch of beer um, how you normally would, run it through all your hoses, run it through all your loops, even run the beer through the spray ball of the tanks. Um, and that beer will soak in any of that flavor and those elastomer volatiles that are in any of your new equipment. So remember when I said good brewers dump beer? This is a prime example. Live by that. If you're not happy with your beer, dump it. 
Um, when you get new equipment, pickle it. Um, this is things that we should all be doing to help make better beer um, for our public and people around the world along with making our equipment last um, decades instead of, instead of just years. Well, that does it for this uh, discussion on stainless steels and taking care of our metals in our brewery. Um, remember, just treat this as entertainment. You should really go to your chemical suppliers, go talk to um, chemical pros in your um, industry to make sure you dial in your own process of passivation because different chemical companies can have a couple different SOPs, standard operating procedures of how they want you to go about doing this. So just treat this as entertainment um, and do your own research before attempting to do any of these procedures moving downstream. I'm just a guy on the internet with an opinion, right? So don't take everything I say uh, as the only way to do everything. So hopefully you guys learned something. Uh, and your equipment will last for years and years to come and you'll be making better beer um, for the world and for me to come try. So until next time, cheers.